Yeah, I have to burn some of this stuff. I have to have some other issues that pop up here and there. Try something that might be a little bit derivative, but Beautiful view of the back of my head. It's just hard to fold this well. See what it looks like. Give me an opportunity to go through the basics of folding a paper crane. So, paper crane has a base shape that's used in a number of origami things where you fold the paper, uh, let's say, valley fold. Valley fold is where when you fold the paper, the crease ends up that way. And then I have the initial mountain fold diagonally to get it into a square. But then when you have this sort of naturally, I forget what this base is called, but naturally folds into this form. And then there's a few different ways you can approach the next steps, but what I find easiest is just to unfold these to create a new crease. with an extra crease later on but and then do a valley fold to the middle this is not the best origami paper valley fold to the middle it's almost easier working smaller Fold. And you unfold and you use 
use those reference points on cold in this direction. No idea how many cranes I've made in my lifetime. On foils. And then repeat on the reverse. Yeah, this holding this. And even at this stage, there's a few different, pretty well established uh, items you can create from these forms. But basic crane, or a flapping crane, which I'm going to do just because it is a little bit clearer of folding. If you open this up, you sort of pull it up, and before you do a hard crease, reestablish its position, and then do the same on the reverse. And then when I do these, what I usually use to determine what's the tail and what's the front is what has a better look to it. Better look tends to be the one that I leave just as. Front. Here you have your basic crane. It's a flapping crane. Because you leave out one step, but it means that when you basic thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unfold all of this and see where the lines fall and use that as a reference point to create a grid for some faces. Maybe take a little bit of leeway with it, but there's your basic form. reference point. I'm just going to outline these freehand. And also it's an uneven surface. Maybe this is a series that I do. Just 
holding up some. as a form, as a reference point, put it onto tracing paper, scan it so I have that as a permanent view, and then take that item and fold it so I have that as a final sort of interesting piece. addition to it. And the crane is a solid place to start. It's pretty ubiquitous. There's only a slight difference between a flapping crane and a more traditional crane in origami, and that's like a final, or a fold towards the end. That makes it a little bit more rigid and perhaps a little bit more elegant looking. If you take the uh, head and the sort of tail of the crane and you fold it over before you uh, well, I'll just know that there's a line there. I missed the line. And I don't want to untape this. So, this has been concerned right now.
just because I've left them in bad condition, but I was going to be like, why are these all... Why are all these brushes acting up in this way? Why are they all misbehaving? The answer is... I'll take care of them. I need to order some more brushes. It lasted me a while. lot of triangles if I do a series where I'm doing origami as a reference point for doing some illustrations. I think it's interesting to see how it goes today and whether or not I want to revisit it. Something where simpler forms probably work better, just because the uh, the lines that end up coming up the shapes are a little bit larger. Because when you do more complex things, you can end up with very small sections. Like these are pretty small over here, but they're not as tiny as they'd be if I had just done one more step in the crane process where you have a more traditional crane, a non-flapping crane. this tape that's playing now, which means that I've got a new tape to mess with in the next tape that I'm doing. I'm doing it focused on cowbell, but like a 808 sounding cowbell. It's going to be like, it's not your dad's cowbell, but it might be because you might have a younger parental figure than me. Not then me, myself, but then my dad. This might be your dad's cowboy.
fazendo isso aí. Tá vendo, mano? Asking if I like to learn to draw realistically, I can draw decently. I just don't enjoy the process as much. It's not as rewarding. It's not as interesting to me. I'm not like the best at drawing realistically, but I'm. this and translate it up a little bit longer. Uh, drawing, oh, there it is, let me switch out the tape. Drawing realistically, you do start to see a variance in colors for more colors that, like, you make an assumption when you look at something as to what colors are present, but the more time you spend with it, the more you start to realize that there's all of these other colors, all of these other elements. Something's not just, like, black here, white here. It's a lot of change and variance in it. It's a lot of reflections and different things. because I was tired of setting up and taking stuff down every day because I forget if it's in the shot or not but over there is my other desk and my TV and in order to watch TV I'd have to take everything down and just as a sort of habit of my day I felt better if I took things down So it wasn't obscuring my view, or just the sort of presence of something to be done. Creeping up on four. a little bit so it comes and goes but it's playing off of uh, let's see if I can point to it the tape player that's actually over there which is why that is moving it 
why I had to go flip it. Because each side of the tape is about 45 minutes. using a little drum machine that I have and a synth app on my phone. The synth app is called Synth One. I don't know if it's available on Android, but I have it on uh, my iPhone. It's pretty robust and pretty easy to use. I don't know if I'd say that if I didn't have a... I have an okay understanding of how electronic music works. Or at least the relationship between... How something sounds and how you can affect it using different parameters. a little bit better. Or, I think I already had the camera, but I didn't have the capture card, which is why I have now three cameras that I can use for streaming. And one of them is over there, uh, filming the cassette tape. Thank you. 
Ooh, I had to uh, go to the dentist recently because one of my fillings came loose. I guess because I was a little bit uh, over enthused with uh, chewing some uh, wasabi peas. call my dentist and make an appointment. I actually have to call a new dentist because my dentist is closed. I'm going to fill this in, scan it, and then I'm going to fold it. It is electronic music. Uh, it's just using a synth. Which Kraftwerk used a lot of synths. I don't know how much they use drum machines, but that's just more of I don't know when they were doing most of their stuff. If they just used the regular old drum set or what. I guess you could probably see some depth in this in the repetition and the sort of direction. Sorry, I had to translate it. I couldn't quite read the Spanish. I could see that you said something about looking at it. So I saw miras.
subtitles. I'm sorry that I don't uh, Los Siento uh, no hablo espanol más bueno que hablo. Does that make sense? I'm sorry that I don't speak Spanish better than I speak it. Okay, I'll say it And it might be more confusing me trying to actually keep things in Spanish. Yeah, that's the exterior. I'm folding this. Usually have a good sense of control. Worst case scenario is I mess something up. And now I'm painting in the smaller sections. sections with a slightly larger brush. But the lips are easier to do with this round brush and with the chisel brush.
sometimes holding your breath helps with working on things. Sort of learn and get a pace to things the more time you spend working on them. I can find more of a rhythm of things. I might do these in quarter sections just so I know where I'm at as I'm working. doesn't take too long to dry. Depends on how thick you lay it on and how it pools. It takes less than a minute most of the time. Sometimes there are sections where because of how the paper warps and the ink pools, if you overload the brush, then it can take longer. It also depends what sort of paper you're working with or whatever surface. So this will be damp for like another 20 seconds maybe. as I'm working. This paper has a little bit of issue. It's more, doesn't absorb as much, um, which is nice in some ways because it has a smoother surface. But it also means that the oils from my fingers stay on there a little bit more. And then that resists the ink, resists the ink. So sections where I held down the paper while working, like over here now where my fingers press down pretty hard, it means that if I try to paint over it, it'll probably resist more. It also depends like if I touch my nose or something and then put my finger down. I'm more likely to have a bit of my fingerprint stays there which means that it both smudges easier and that the ink doesn't settle as well. So I have to be careful when I'm working with this in a minute, and I might 
for future instances of this process. Depending on whether or not I repeat it. After today. Um, I might need to switch paper just so that the ink is more absorbed into it because I'll be doing a bit of working and manipulating the paper. And that could smudge the ink more than I'd like.
line.
Slightly different than a traditional crane in the sense that uh, if you were doing a traditional crane before folding up these, you would fold once over and it would thin out the legs a little. And the head. But because I knew that I was planning on. over the the lines generally gave myself a little bit of space. It's not perfect in this paper itself. I'll use a different one if I do this again. But I fold it at once. Even if you were doing the, um, let's see, I guess if you were doing the traditional one, you'd still have the same availability of just a little bit more. Cool. 
it with this one, but doesn't work as well. And I just ripped it. Okay. We'll leave it as is. Thank you. I might revisit this with some slightly better paper for it. This paper is a little crispy. So it's not the best for it, but anyway, it's a good format premise to be able to revisit, come back to. Now it's time for a spiel. Thank you, Tamara and Zenshi and Anna. Um, so if you want to buy this design on a shirt for alternative designs, things similar to it, and I'm gonna see how well I can uh, photograph this for selling just this thing itself. Even though it's imperfect, it's more of a uh, an interesting item, a good baseline. Uh, you can go to traceloops.com slash store, nope, traceloops.com slash store, singular, not plural, um, if you are uh, looking to buy something and have it shipped outside of the US. There's not a, an option on the website itself, but you can email me and I can work with you, let you know what the price differences are to make a purchase such as that at trace and email me traceloops at traceloops.com. You can also email me there with just general questions and such. Um, if you want to watch this stream or other streams in full, you can go to youtube.com slash traceloops and see a bunch of stuff there. Uh, if you want to follow me on other platforms, you can follow me on instagram.com slash traceloops as well as tiktok.com slash traceloops. I might turn this into a series um, and test some different origami things. See what I know just from my memory. I don't know that many just from my mind. I don't know too many forms. I know how to make like a water bottle. Uh, a crane at some point I learned a monkey. Ha. I can do a fish, but the fish is a little bit finicky. A flower would be good. I can do an iris. Anyway, uh, thank you all for watching. I plan on being back here tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, if you have any questions right this minute, you can throw them in the chat there, and I'll do my best to respond. If not, you can email me at that email address that's listed in the comments, traceloops at traceloops.com. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to head out, and thank you all for watching. I am going back tomorrow at 3 p.m. I'll give it like a minute and take a sip of soda pop. There's not too much of a of a need or questions coming through, so I'm gonna head on out. Thank you all for watching. Be back. Oops. Adios. Okay. Adios.